Welcome to Mastering the Attention Economy podcast. I'm your host, Ari Lewis. Twice a week, we interview entrepreneurs, executives, and industry leaders on how to break through the noise and capture the audience's attention. Today's guest is Anna Angelic. Anna is an experienced strategy executive who specializes in modern fashion, luxury, and lifestyle brands. Named a Forbes CMO Next, Anna earned her doctorate in sociology and worked at the world's top brands and advertising agencies. Thank you very much for having me and for kind words. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a reader of, of your newsletter and, and for those who, who probably aren't familiar with it, you know, your, your, your big thesis is around the, the shift in, in brand strategy. So, you know, all these uh, people in these, in these brands were, were geared towards luxury brands. And now we're, you're, you know, we're having this shift in, in what you describe as um, this modern aspiration economy and sort of that luxury belief in luxury brands aren't the only thing that matter when when uh, consumers are, 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 are looking to purchase. So can, can you talk more about that and, and, and describe your theory? Yeah, absolutely, with pleasure. So uh, my book, The Business of Aspiration, is coming out on October 27th, and you can pre-order it now on Amazon or on Rutledge, which is the publisher website, and you can also hear read more about it at thebusinessofaspiration.com. So that, that's that's sort of like the, the, the housekeeping. And in terms of what you uh, ask me specifically is that how like 100 years ago, aspiration was very closely tied to economic status and social status, so social class and economic power, wealth. So how it usually worked, you had upper classes that were setting trends and setting what was aspirational. And then the, the middle class, the lower class were looking looking up to what those guys are, rich guys are doing, how they're spending their time, what they're buying, what they're valuing, and they want, they imitate it. They wanted to kind of like, they aspire to be like that. So you, that's why you have, um, you have a lot of trends that emerged the last, in the last hundred years, they basically spread for that rich people to everyone else. And then in the past sort of 10 or 20 years, this is still the case, but that kind of pyramid started crumbling, which means that you didn't, like sort of aspiration started being decoupled from wealth. And I'll explain more. And then you didn't have to be born high in high, like high class in order to achieve the taste and education necessary. You don't need to be the smartest. You don't need to be like the richest. You just need to have the internet access basically. So going back to the first thesis with like having rich people having access to luxury and defining what luxury is sort of broke down when we see what's happening with, for example, streetwear or what is happening with environmentalism or sustainability, buying things that are good for the planet or with having younger generation buying from generations, especially buying from brands that have a clear social mission. So it became more aspirational to buy a Patagonia jacket to signal your own sort of environmental consciousness than to go and buy another luxury thing. So again, of course, a lot of status symbols staying the same as they stayed before, but we're seeing emerges of new status symbols. All of a sudden, it was very sort of plugged in to travel around the world, to, to, to collect air miles or to have like a lot of Instagram followers. But now even we are going beyond that. So that, 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 that's almost like inconspicuous consumption stage when you had like your knowledge, your, your social capital. But now we're going even beyond that when everything is going towards micro, towards private, towards secret. We don't want to be like out there on the mass social networks and signal our status there. Our status is defined in much smaller groups. So that is kind of where I'm getting at. It's kind of what, how is status built today and how is your taste signaled today and we are seeing more and more that's being signaled in private because we we, ha we have a very strong assumption that is not wrong that what we see on social media is not real so what we want and how we want to socialize with others is in much more micro groups so you know you've worked at companies like david german and, and rebecca minkoff and and these are you know 
luxury, luxury, luxury brands, um, without a doubt. You know, have your theory did that? Did that come from working with 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 these companies and and realizing that you know consumers weren't just interested in you know uh, these 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 premium brands, but they wanted more, and and you were realizing that when you were creating the strategy around that that you needed to ju- to to sell more than you know oh this is a premium brand and and it's a status symbol or or did it did it come from something else where you noticed trends in the market um, you know how how did you sort of evolve in, in, in realizing that this 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 trend and this brand strategy evolution was happening oh uh, my background is a combination of uh, academic training i have a phd in sociology and then it was also informed by my working in agencies for a long time and in the past five years of my agency career focusing on luxury fashion and lifestyle brands and sort of seeing having a number of different clients and seeing how category is changing, how consumers are changing, how culture is changing and how companies themselves are changing. So that was informed. And then the second from working on the brand side, it really informed that you can't really sell high end luxury, probably high end jewelry the way you used to sell it before. It's not enough anymore because what consumers are buying, they're not buying products, they're buying belonging or identity and in that or, or, or sort of sort of like influence, if you will, or like signaling of a good taste. So companies need to sell those things. So that is kind of what I was able to see on from the inside and how the brand always needs to stand for something other than its own products. And that was at Rebecca Minkoff, which is contemporary brand, not luxury. And David Yurma, which is very clearly hard luxury in terms of jewelry, but has a lot of product lines. So that is like kind of double, uh, double inspiration. Yeah. And so one of the things that, you know, you're, you're talking about is the shift with, with brands and that they're not just buying, you know, products, but they're buying into ideas, identities. Um, one of the things that I think we've, we've seen is a, a lot of uh, influencers launching their own brands. You know, how much do you see people purchasing more and more from the, these influencers? Because to your point, they're not purchasing brands, but they're purchasing identities and they're trying to aspire to be uh, the influencer and they want to be, you know, the Kim Kardashian or they want to be the, the Kylie Jenners of the world. Do you think your your thesis and, and theory applies to those types of brands as well? Yeah, absolutely. And then what the, what those internet celebrities are, are selling, it's also like access. They, they're very, they have a very two-way relationship with their customers. Like Chiara Ferrani like invited their, their, their entire, her entire millions of followers to her own wedding. So we have like this feeling that we really know those people intimately. And that, that sort of that intimacy makes us want to have what they have and think that we are like they are. There is not that sort of it's not an advertisement the entire life is advertisement so it's not like like in magazines you have like specific ads that interrupt content it's like the content is there is one flow there's like the content landscape is flat so you have an ad and then you have like i don't know like a, 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 an advice and then you have education and you have entertainment and everything is on the same plane so that's how consumption goes and those influencers are basically media companies they have a really wide reach and what they're selling is their lifestyle programming and in that sense it's kind of their endorsement because we know we feel we know them them so well we are we are we are inclined to 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 believe them more than than we believe like traditional companies but at the same time like i wouldn't believe kim kardashian with a book recommendation or kylie jenner with you know like my vacation maybe recommendation i would go to my friends so i think that we are seeing now this big uh, sort of fragmentation of the influence landscape when you have different layers of influence and reach so, you know, one of your recent newsletters, you discussed uh, Goop and sort of did a, a teardown of it and, 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 and the flywheel. You know, can, can you, uh, at, we're, we're talking at a high level, can you talk about like a brand like Goop and how, how they've done a good job of shifting from, you know, not just being a, a luxury brand, but really connecting with the consumer and, and, and creating this flywheel that you sort of described in, in that article? 
Right. Well, I call that the wonder wheel model, which is the model that starts from one signature product or service and then starts adding other products and services that all that reflect the original values and the point of view that the first product has had. So the other examples would be like, say, remove a suitcase or it would be like Muji. It started like supermarket brand, but it was always very clear. We are going to not spend money on like fancy packaging and or fancy promotion. We are just going to be bare minimum. And that's why we're going to be able to keep prices low. And like everything is minimalistic in a sense, you don't need any frills. It's just Muji is enough. That's literally what the name uh, means. And they kept the, that same philosophy, that same vibe when they started adding clothes, household items, cafes, library, hotel. So that is the whole point of the Wonder Wheel. You, you start with one product and that's embedded values of the, the, that the brand has and the ethos and philosophy and then you expand to other categories. So when it comes to Goop, the idea was that newsletter that actually says, hey, you can live a life that's higher quality and you can really live fully you can as Gwyneth Paltrow said milk the, we have one life let's milk the shit out of it she said in her group documentary so that newsletter was literally about that like no don't waste your time when you go to I don't know Copenhagen don't waste your time with those tourist destinations I'll tell you where to go I'll tell you where to get a bikini wax I'll tell you where to eat and so on so that same ethos that insider knowledge that improves the quality of one's life then spread into like magazine and goop products goop beauty and the documentary and then all pop-ups and then curation of an aggregation of all retail products that's the same idea how to get the most you can out of life because you live once how to self-improve at every single moment so you know why do you think that this has sort of taken hold from the the these the status symbols to to you know bi or I should say this this wealth consumption to you know having more than than it being about the the luxury the brand like if you think about Instagram right you know all 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 these people are posting photos with fancy cars and or they post here I'm at this luxury destination you'd think it would be the opposite. But but sort of what you what you're describing and, and what I've seen is is right. It's 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 not that. It's it's that you know consumers want more than that. It, how come there's sort of this, um, you know, I, I guess contradiction between the two between what, what social media sort of seems like it's telling you and, and where brand strategy is actually going. Well, I think it's not a contradiction, it's just that this space has become shaped by, by the name, dynamic between going like very micro and sort of very clubby. The entire world be is becoming a membership club from your gym you go to, to what you eat, to where you go. You want to have like sort of that feeling that, that you are insider. And, in, and that's also like feels safe and it especially feels safe in the cancel culture and especially feels safe because as i said what we see on the internet is not necessarily real when you see like that there are russian jets that are grounded and the influencers going there and like posing on on, on their the jazz that can you can rent anything these days literally anything and you can take photo of it that and like establish that that lifestyle that is not aspirational uh, aspirational anymore because anyone can have it anyone can rent anything they want for like one hour and like go and like look here i am in the private plane so now that there became sort of table stakes, that accessibility to those traditional status symbols, now you want to create social distance through other things. And that other thing is your taste. Can you distinguish between those two different kinds of coffee? Do you know exactly what is the difference between those three types of sake, for example? Are you a bourbon connoisseur? That's taste. Then the next level is a community. Which communities do you belong to? Do you have access to Clubhouse right now? Do you have an invite? Do you, are you or you're on the wait list? Or are you like a member of different kinds of private clubs and private even restaurants and hotels? Like now in New York, they're like private 
private restaurants that not everyone knows about. So that means like you already have this pre-selected class of people that are selected based on their community belonging, not necessarily on, on their class. They're selected on if they have a great taste or if they have like some special sort of influence, which is the third part, which is like, what is the influence now? It's not having the widest reach, but having the best curation, having the best take and filter of different things that culturally and social influences those around you. So like like world is going towards towards more macro overall. So, so yeah, no, I, I, I really liked how you described that, especially, you know, someone could just rent a, pri a private plane, right? I, I never thought of that, but, but, you know, you really don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so I could just, you know, rent a rent a private plane for a half hour, take some photos and, and get off of it. <laughs> so, you know, I, I guess one of the things that sort of took me about this trend is it, it seems like we're potentially having a, a bigger, maybe perceived wealth gap where these are these are areas that only, you know, the upper class can 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 get to, you know, what, what do you think the results of this just can be for society like this doesn't this doesn't this seems like a really bad trend potentially if 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 these status symbols are taking hold and and sort of you know you have the the elites uh gathering like this and and locking people out i don't think that's a bad thing at all because um Again, access is never a bad thing and democratization of taste and democratization of access is not, not a bad thing. The question is only what new forms of <coughs> cultural formats are in, what new forms of cultural capital are emerging, what new forms of status are emerging. That's what my book is all about, is like, how do you, because human beings, they want to signal status no matter what. During the quarantine, it was like, how many times a day did you exercise? Did you go out? Did you wear a mask? It's kind of like always, what is that social distinction between uh, like among other, others in our group or versus a society? There always needs to be some like some sort of differentiation. We want to belong, but we also want to differentiate uh, ourselves. So in that sense, I don't think it's bad that that those hierarchies are broken down. And I think it's even amazing that like anyone with internet access can become like connoisseur of any kind. It can become a sneakerhead, it can become a coffee connoisseur, it can become like, I don't know, like you can collect cacti you know and you can become an expert there and build your audience and then you can make money out of it that's the entire this aspirational economy is all about what what kind of exchange is happening what kind of what kind of capital is being traded and how established companies can jump and help people be, feel like they belong to a community or how they can create a membership club that that creates that distinction so i think it's a good thing it's just a thing of adjustment and of of, of creating a different strategy that you're communicating because even rolls royce now has like oh, it's not a really good time to have like this crazy opulent so, so they they made the little symbol like ghost, you know, like that, that kind of invisible luxury that we are all moving towards, like that we've been that we have been moving towards since two thousand eight, when luxury boutiques would give you this like nondescript like shop brown shopping bag, so you you know you don't show that 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 you're better off than people who are who are struggling. So I think that's the same situation now, and especially because the rich are going incognito more and more because of the trends I described before and it's it's just a symbol of best bad taste that you have like a giant pool in your background or you know like there's been a bigger backlash because the social differences are very visible at times of crisis and you sort of don't even when when jeffrey katzerberg put like oh the beautiful sunset self isolating on my yacht it was a big backlash because you're like read the room guy you know like it's not you know, society is not ready to have that hierarchy anymore. And if you want to have it, just like, like get out of the view, like don't, don't post. So, you know, as, as we wrap up my, my question that I always ask guests at the end is, you know, um, but if, if you were to go back and, and start writing your book again, you know, what is, what is one lesson you've taken away, one change that you would make with, with all the research you've done now that, that you would apply? 
honestly like that book was written in two months and it just was like every week there was like one chapter and it was really easy and even back and forth with that it was easy so there is nothing that i would be like oh my god i like what is the lesson i i didn't have the opportunity to 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 sort of go out and but i did speak with people because i wrote it starting when we came back from japan in 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 february so let's say march and april in those two months and that was when we had to quarantine because of coronavirus so one thing that i had to go back when i finished the book in april was to add a chapter opening and closing chapter how coronavirus basically killed the modern aspiration economy because it trades all in intangibles when you can't leave the house you don't have that travel you don't have that experience you can't go to sicily to learn how to make burrata you know like you can do all of that maybe at home but you can't you know just that traditional way how I envision not traditional but like the modern aspiration way that 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 how I originally envisioned the modern aspiration didn't really hold I'm sure it's gonna come back but I really felt obliged to put to put the concluding chapter that says hey aspirations are actually different then status symboling is different now we are all about like wokeness and value signaling and it is very important in society that we move towards like the social consciousness the sort of equality the racial equality the environmentalism those values are those that are aspirational because crisis there's going to be a lot of crisis but we need to be better at addressing them and only bigger social equality can really brought that on so i really felt 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 the need to add that as 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 ultimate aspiration is not to have like vinyl collection it's really to 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 do good to give back to your community and to give back to your society so yeah i guess that was uh, the thing that i learned that to, to think beyond economic and cultural and go more towards like being aware of the world we live in so anna i want to say you know thanks so much for coming on i, I learned a lot this was this was a topic i was really interested in 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 hearing your opinion on especially since i'm a, a big fan of your twitter big fan of your uh, newsletter but you know where where can people find you on social media if if they want to follow you or can they subscribe to your newsletter and i'll i'll make sure to to put the links in in in, in youtube and on itunes yeah please put the links in because i very unwittingly like put my complicated last name it's a n d j e l a c a a a on twitter on instagram it's the same you can put that link for for both that would be great and again the book is coming out on october 27th and it's available for pre-order on amazon or at my book website which is the business of aspiration.com and my newsletter is called the sociology of business and if you google my name anna angelic and the sociology of business it will pop up right there i'm not going to bore you with the substack.com but you can include that in the link and thanks for everyone for listening and especially thank you for having me at and great questions i enjoyed this conversation great great and yeah i'll, I'll put the the sub stack in in the uh description but thanks so much again for joining us and until next time everyone